episode 87 of Outlander Cast is brought to you by MinuteWithMary.com. It's like me. It's me, guys. And guess what? I have a new business where it's makeup and skincare, and I share all sorts of fun things. So you can learn more by going to MinuteWithMary.com. All the way from Cranston, Rhode Island, welcome to Outlander Cast. It's a podcast dedicated to the show Outlander on Stars. everybody. Are you excited? (laughs) I'm excited. The time is coming, guys. I am your host, Mary Larson. My name is Blake, and I have never wanted to be a television reporter so bad in my life. What do you want to be when you grow up? A television reporter. That's right. And if that is not your current answer, it's going to be by the end of today's episode because yes, we're all excited. Season three is here. It's coming. It is coming. I am so excited. But guys... There's someone out there in this world whose job it is, like her real deal, 24-7, well, let's be, hopefully not 24-7, you know, eight eight hours a day. Well, no, I'm thinking maybe like 10, yes. 10 six. <laughs> so, <laughs> she, uh, she gets to write about Outlander. She gets to go visit the set. She gets to go be a part of this amazing fandom as a fan, but this is her job, and you're going to wish that it was your job, too. I already do. <laughs> right? Wow, man. Let's get into it. Uh, yeah. Are you, are you, ready? you know what? Yeah. Let's just not waste any time. Let's do this. I'm so, jazzed. I'm, I'm pumped. I'm ready to go. Because Lynette does bring up a lot of good things about season three. That I don't even want to. people to have to wait another second Okay. I'm hear. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, Press I'm, the button. I'm, I'm just very happy about it's it. It's so exciting. Okay. Joining us today is the Lynette Rice. That's right, Lynette Rice, the West Coast news editor for Entertainment Weekly, where she has worked since 1999 covering the TV industry. But we all know her as the lead writer for all things Outlander for Entertainment Weekly, a.k.a. EW. Lynette, thank you so much for talking with us today on Outlander Cast. My pleasure. We want to start things off and know about how you got into the entertainment writing and reporting. Oh, gosh. Uh, I've been at EW for over 18 years. Before that, I worked for one of the Hollywood trades, the Hollywood Reporter, uh, where I covered television. And then before that, I, I just I was at daily newspapers just covering general news. And at my last newspaper, which was in Los Angeles, I, I, I transitioned to uh, entertainment coverage. You, you start to figure out that you've got to specialize if you want to try to uh, stay alive in this business. And so at that time, I transitioned to, trans- transitioned to e- entertainment, and I stayed with it ever since. And once I was at the, uh, the Hollywood Reporter and then came to EW, I've always covered television, mostly from a business perspective. Uh, I mean, if there's a, a business story to be told uh, at EW, I'm usually the one... Uh, to tell it. Uh, and then as part of obviously our mission at the magazine, we also, you know, write about shows. So we, and we, we write about specific shows, shows that we like, um, uh, shows that, you know, we can embrace, but also we think the fans will embrace. You probably won't see an NCIS on our cover. Uh, you're <laughs> not going to see criminal minds on our cover. Um, but obviously you'll see outlander several times. So speaking of that, then, how did you land that amazing deal of Outlander assignment? Was it just assigned to you and then you fell in love with it? Or did you just like when you hear it, did you jump out and say, no, that's mine. I must have Outlander. It's funny. Sometimes uh, shows are assigned. Sometimes we all fight over them. I remember, I mean, I was at EW back in the Sopranos days. And I was a little more junior at that point. So the chance of me ever giving a Soprano story was like, you know, zero. Um, uh, but 
you know, then some shows come along and nobody embraces them. And I just happen to be a lucky one where, uh, you know, you, you, you see a show come along. I hadn't read the books. I wasn't a book reader at all. But you could see very early on that this had the potential to be a big deal for stars. I, you, you know, I knew that there was a huge readership base there because the, bo- the books were so bloody successful that I just said, you know, we need to cover this. And it took a while, too, because, you know, as you know, there's so much television out there. And we can't, you know, this is our job is to keep up with TV and we can't keep up with it all. And so even though I embraced it, I've got editors who haven't watched it. So it actually took me a while to get to convince them that we got to do this story. We got to do this story. Uh, and so even the first season, uh, um, it, we, we didn't have anything like I, 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 I did initial stories. I think um, when it first launched, but it was very little. And so it wasn't until later that we finally uh, going into the second season, did we do our first cover? And that was the cover of uh, Sam and Katrina, uh, you know, basically topless. And, (laughs) um, uh, and yeah, yeah. I mean, it was really erotic, uh, the fans went nuts, and then the editors could see, oh, gee whiz, there's folks that are interested in the show. And so from there, it was like a different animal. But even then, we have editors that haven't seen it because there's just no time. You know, there's mm-hmm. we there's so much to keep up with. And so I now I'm embedded in it, and so I have to keep them apprised. Okay, we really need to cover this. We need to be on top of this, that sort of thing. Uh, and that's what all of us do. We all end up... Uh, as has EW has evolved more and more, we all uh, just kind of go to their, our favorite shows, and then we become the specialists on those shows. Like my colleague James Hibbert is our specialist on Game of Thrones. He also flies to the set, and he spends a lot of time there. We've got Dalton Ross, who knows everything there is to know about The Walking Dead. Um, uh, we have Dan Sneerson, who now has embraced the show This Is Us on NBC. And so they become, you know, we become like the go-to folks for those shows, and we cover it a lot. So can I apply for one of these jobs? Because this sounds like my, my dream job. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> uh, it, you know, it's, it's funny. It, it, you, you know, it's, the grass is always greener. And if the fans are so... Uh, so nice and complimentary to me. And it's like, Oh my God, you have the dream job. And I do. I, 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 I I count my lucky stars that I'm a journalist who is still working after all these years because the business has changed so much since when I got out of college and I was working at newspapers. Now some of the early newspapers that I worked for don't exist anymore. And a lot of my former colleagues that I went to school with and that I worked at newspapers for, they're not even in journalism anymore because the business has changed so much. And so now I'm probably working harder at what I do than I did when I first began, because not only am I feeding the beast, that's the magazine. I also uh, uh, have to uh, create a lot of content for our website. So we now have a, a sister, uh, we have a, a, our own channel on Sirius uh, EW radio. And so I do an outlander show for that. We, um, we now do a lot more video. We have our own uh, website called pen. That's people entertainment weekly network. And so we're producing video for that, um, all to, for the same pay. And so um, <laughs> it's, it's a lot of work. But that said, it's fun work because the flip side of it is uh, the amount of travel that I've been able to do because of Outlander and other shows that have shot overseas has just been mind boggling. I've been to Scotland several times now. You know, I've gone through parts of England. I just went to South Africa uh, which is totally bitching. I mean, it's completely <laughs> bitching. And I mean, you know, as reporters, we're also TV fans as well. We want TV to succeed. Um, uh, one, because it gives us something to do. It's our business. But as fans, we, you know, we want it to work out. And so, um, I mean, I don't fangirl out when I get with, you know, Sam or Katrina and say, give me a selfie. I, I won't do that. But as soon as they walk away, i will like, oh, my God. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah, but I never let them see me say, "Oh my god, that was awesome." Yeah. <laughs> that, that kind of thing. <laughs> you know, there, there there is one thing that you said I want to I want to kind of get back to, which was you mentioned 
the cover for season two is kind of what showed you edit is like, wow, this is, you know, people are engaging with this product. Let's cover this product like mm-hmm. a, a little bit more uh, carefully. Uh, was Did it take a little convincing from you to cre- to get this cover idea out there to, to make this happen? Or was it something that your editors just decided, okay, we're doing this, we're taking a chance? Um, uh, it did take them, it, it did take a bit to say, you know, we, to get to that point that we did that first cover, that took over a year. Uh, that mm-hmm. took some time. Um, once they finally saw that there was uh, a fan base there, then they went full throttle. Uh, the actual execution of the of the cover itself, you know, how it was, uh, what they did with that, I mean, that's all photo. I didn't even picture that. So sometimes actually... You know, once I once my job is done and like I say, do this cover, they're like, okay, we'll do this cover. And then it's out of my hands. And then it becomes this whole thing between our editor and the photo department. And, you know, they fig- figure out the concept of what they're going to do. Um, and, um, and that in itself, by the way, that cover uh, had such an interesting um, origin story because, as you'll recall, when this all began, you know, Diana, all, all, all along when she was writing this book, she's very specific in that this is not a romance novel. This is not a romance series. This is, mm-hmm. uh, this is so many things to so many people. And yet, as the show began and developed and continued, the fact is, bottom line, it is a romance story. Uh, that's what I think is bringing viewers into it. I mean, they, Ron Moore does an incredible job of telling um, the history of Scotland and, and where we've come from, but I believe the viewers are loving it because of the romance. And I think the romance is what will continue to bring new viewers in. And I think stars realizes that too. Uh, mm-hmm. So I, I, I say all this uh, because there was um, some pushback from the fan base of, you know, putting them half nude on our cover. Like you're just selling the romance. We literally use the phrase bodice ripping, I think mm-hmm. as one of the, uh, the subhead on the cover and that ruffled some feathers because obviously there's a good contingent who stands with Diana saying, this is not a romance. Uh, but at the same time, stars, they freaking love that cover. That's yeah. what, that's the kind of image they want on their posters. You know, because that that helps to sell the show. I mean, you know, I don't have to tell you, sex sells, obviously. Yeah. Yes. Right. But that's, <laughs> that's the image that they also want to portray because this is about a love story that people really dig. And um, even Diana, uh, I remember she went on Facebook and she argued the pros and cons of what we did. I mean, ultimately, she was very supportive. She's just been such a great partner in all of this, and we've developed a nice relationship you know, where I can email her and say, can you just play this to me? Or can you give me a quote? Mm-hmm. And she's great about it. Uh, but she talked about the pros and cons of doing that uh, way back when. And so now I think it's, you look back and to me, it remains for the 18 years I've been here. I think it's perhaps one of the most beautiful, if not beautiful cover that we've ever done. Uh, it, it was just incredible. It was incredible. Yeah, and I, I- and what made, I, I'm sorry to cut you off, but what made it good, too, is we also know the chemistry, chemistry between these two actors is just bar none, just the best, the best. And so it just <laughs> feeds into an already gorgeous photo. I was, I was going to say, I wrote an article on our site uh, in complete support of that cover because, I mean, it was beautiful. It was beautifully shot. I loved all, all the coloring. It framed right. But it finally got people talking about Outlander at least within the, I mean, outside of the circles that we, normally people talk about it, outside of the, just the Outlander fandom circles. People the Outlanders it. of Outlander, is that what you're trying yeah, to say? Yeah. <laughs> the Outlanders of Outlander. And, you know, and that's, that's the key point here, too, and that's the point you have to keep reminding the just the, the rabid fans of the, the books themselves. You know, they look at this story much differently than television does and, you know, regular folks on the street who know nothing about Diana's books. And I know that uh, the readers in particular get very frustrated, especially this week when the actors are doing their rounds of interviews in New York and the uh, questions are very superficial. They don't really delve below the surface of Outlander and it pisses them off. They want to see like really smart questions 
uh, of these actors talking about their experience and their, you know, their, you know, their character trajectory and all that kind of stuff. Um, they got to be, they, 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 they got to take a step back and say, okay, this is not about me. This, uh, these interviews, these appearances, this cover, uh, this is not about me and serving my needs. This is about, you know, making a television show work and um, getting in new viewers. And sometimes the simplest things are the way to do that. And that's uh, showing the fact that you've got two very attractive actors starring in a show that has a great romance at its core. Uh, that's what's going to get people in, not the fact that you won't find a better recreation of Battle of Culloden anywhere. That's not going to be <laughs> it. It's going to be the, the star's uh, who make it happen. And so, um, and, and, and so I'm glad that you argued on behalf of the cover because, you know, this is, you know, stars is in a business. They need to sell this show and they're selling that they got pretty people and they do have pretty people. And you know, it's okay. Everyone, it's okay. If we just stop and say, gosh, they're so pretty. And I love looking at pretty people. <laughs> that doesn't make us shallow. That doesn't make us, uh, not appreciate the historical, you know, perspective of the book and how well written it is. Um, that, you know, that's fine. We do appreciate that, but it's also okay for us to say, God damn it. Sam is so freaking hot. You know, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. You know, you mentioned before about traveling a lot with work and you just brought up New York and how the, the stars were there. I want to know what your day was like on September 5th for the premiere in New York. Oh, um, it wasn't sexy at all. Um, um, I, I, though I was very happy that I got a good night's sleep because I never sleep when I go to New York. Um, um, that whole event was so stressful for me because uh, uh, through Twitter, I've been able to engage more with the fans. Uh, it seems like a lot of them, you know, it's the all the same age. And so I see the passion on Twitter. And so it makes me feel bad that so many people didn't get into this event. Uh, it makes me feel bad that it kind of developed into this idea of a premiere when it really wasn't considered premiere. It was just um, a, a subscriber only event for a limited number of folks who managed to get you know, through our website and score a ticket. And so when it started to be described as a premiere, my immediate reaction was, oh my God, I feel so bad um, because then people feel left out. Um, um, you know, planning for it to, you know, yes. I mean, it, it, am I mindful of the fact that I know there's going to be folks there who's going to want me to ask the, you know, the question of all question of these actors who have legitimately been asked everything there is to be asked about the show and I'm all asked out because I've been reporting on season three for the last year. And so it's like, what can I ask them? And I haven't already asked them, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And so there's a little bit of that going on, but I have to tell you that once, you know, this was the screener was at our, um, our timing buildings, which is downtown by uh, the world trade center area. And, um, you know, I walked into it. We had like a, a reception and we built a, a little red carpet because we had some press outlets there who were doing some video and stuff. And so all the fans, which was basically 98.9% .9 women, um, were in this room. And when they, when Sam and Katrina walked into the room, uh, all these cameras just like shot up and grabbing them as they walked into the room. And that was hysterical. And then, and watching them was the most fun of all. It was the most fun of all. And, um, you know, I've already seen the episode. Um, I got, you know, as you know, everyone, I was in the room at Comic-Con, and so I got to see the episode then, and I've seen it a couple more since then. So I, I didn't really need to watch the episode again. And, I mean, I've had my Sam and Katrina time, you know, many times. I don't sit there with them in the green room and chit-chat. Um, I'm under no illusion that they're my buddies now. I mean, this is work. And, and so I leave them alone. You know, they, they do their thing. I'm off in the hallway pacing. Uh, uh, and then, you know, the, the, the Q and A begins and, um, you know, it, I, it all, it's all it is, is just like a big clock because it ran late because the red carpet was running late. And, um, and then the, the screener started late. So that just reduced our time to actually the Q and A part to only half an hour. And there's 300 people in the room. And most of those are women who want to ask questions of their own. And so when I asked for questions, I'd say 
30 hands shot up and it made me feel so bad again that we could only get to like maybe six. And so after it was over, cause I, and so in the meantime, no one sees this is that I have somebody in the corner of my eye snapping their finger and literally on my phone, which I brought up to my chair, this is probably way more detail than you wanted, but you're getting it uh, on my phone. <laughs> um, I, I have a star's, uh, publicist saying, last question, last question. It's like, Jesus, get off me. And so they obviously went off stage and then I stayed behind uh, just to ch- uh, chat with the women. And that was super fun. That was super fun. And they, you know, they were really nice and, and we didn't, um, they were just happy to be there. That's, that was the, the best part of it. That was the best part of it. You know, you do this for so long and, you know, I, it's, from an outside point of view, you think, oh, my God, you get to be around these stars and stuff. Um, uh, y- yes, it's great, but, you know, they're people, too, and they look at somebody like me that's business, i got to talk to you. They're not always the greatest interviews in the world, and they want it to be over, and, you know, I want it to be over because i got to go back and do a story and stuff, but I need you to say this. I need you to say this. Can you please address it this way and blah, 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 and, oh, my God, I hope you say something funny. Um, so when you just get a chance to talk to the fans, that's super cool. Super, super cool. Did I make my job sound sexy? It doesn't sound very sexy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think it, sound, it sounds great. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, speaking, yeah. speaking of sexy, uh, what was, what was the day like prepping for you? Did, did you get to have a team of stylists? Did you get your hair done? Did you get to have a selection of clothes? I'm just picturing like the closet <laughs> of, uh, <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not, I don't, I, I don't do television, so I'm not Kelly Ripa. I don't do that. The only time that I actually spend that kind of money is, when I go to the Emmys or the Oscars and then I'll do it because I don't want to feel like I'm barking at the moon when I go from walk into the Oscars. But for things like that, I, um, I, I mean, I did it all myself. Uh, you could see, you, can, you obviously see it by the pictures. Um, I just try not to draw too much attention to myself because it's all about them. Um, and, you know, and of course, you know, you can't compare. There was um, this one moment with Katrina and then she took a selfie with the crowd and she lifted her hands up to with her, film, her, her camera and, of course, she had her perfectly flat belly was showing and it's just like, oh, my God, I, I just can't do this. <laughs> 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 uh, and, and you know, and and and, and that's that. It, it, it's funny. It, it it leads itself to all these like come to Jesus discussions with my mother because you know every day you know it, when you cover Hollywood so for so much time, it, it really is la la land. And the fact that the folks in this town don't look like the regular people that you and I see every day wherever we're living, mm-hmm. and so it, it's. I mean, it's you, the women are just tiny. Shiny. The men are perfect. Their skin is perfect. They, I mean, and it's like unrealistic to like sit across from them, and then I, you know, to leave there, and I have to constantly tell myself, "Okay, I'm not them. I don't, um, you know, I. This is their job to be in front of the camera. You know, when that try not to get, you know, compare yourself to a, this. I mean, I'm, I'm taking you down a rabbit hole with me. You probably don't want to include, but you know, that's no. <laughs> that's yeah, that's the life. Of no, I, I, we're gonna I get it. I mean. I always tell the story about how my wife is the most beautiful woman I've ever met in my life. But when I was at the red carpet premiere for season two or season one B, whatever it was, and Katrina walked up to me and I'm supposed to ask her a question. I, my heart stopped. I was like, uh, I felt, I always say like, I felt like an eighth grader asking out a senior to the prom. Like I just, you, you don't see that every day. It, it's just, so I, I, I feel where you're coming from. You're yeah. not alone. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. I mean, I, I've now gotten used to that, doing that, but I can remember way back when at the start of my career and I had to interview Antonio Banderas when he came out with the movie Desperado. (laughs) And this is when he was in his prime hottie years. Mm -hmm. I mean, just like, oh, my God. And (laughs) I was in a hotel room with him alone and I couldn't wait for it to be over because all I could fear was that he could see the word sex emblazoned on my forehead. And I just, I just, I, I, all I could think about is I want this to be over because this is so <laughs> stressful for me. So I'm glad that those I've gotten older and I've done, I've done this for so long. And now if I see George Clooney, I don't freak out, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, so you you have seen the premiere, obviously, the, the uh, yes. of season three. Yes. What are your, uh, without any spoilers, of course, but what are your overall thoughts of the pr- premiere and, and and really where you think season three is heading? I am really excited about uh, season three. Uh, I think that Ron did a brilliant job uh, with the battle. He actually wanted to stage the entire battle of Culloden because the actual battle was. Uh, only 20 minutes long, but then even for an episode, he, they figured out it was too long. But I was blown away at the action. Uh, I thought it looked so good. Uh, and I was, I loved the way that um, um, uh, he handles the interaction uh, between Blackjack and, and uh, Jamie. Oh, just great. Um, <laughs> I think fans have uh, something in store for them with this, the whole two separate stories with Claire in the future and Jamie in the past. I really wanted to stay in Boston with Claire and Frank as long as possible. I just loved it. Uh, you feel so sorry for Frank this season, and that's going to be hard for all the Tobias lovers uh, because, oh, that poor man, you know, and it's mm-hmm. nothing he's done. It's just his wife, you know, went through some stones and all hell broke loose. and It was no fault of his <laughs> own, you know? And so I, you, you'll feel really sorry for him. He's, I, I, I think this is an Emmy performance for him. Uh, I think uh, as for Sam, he has really found himself in this character. I, I definitely feel like this is his best season yet. Um, uh, he is more than just a preface. He's an incredible, he's, he's, he's an incredible actor. He's so perfect for this role. Uh, and in fact, at the Q and a, uh, one fan asked, when you guys read the books now, who do you picture when you, you know, you're reading about Clara Jamie and they said they don't picture each other, which I thought was funny. And I asked the same question of Diana too, back in the day when it first began, she doesn't see Sam and Katrina when she's writing these books. Uh, I see them now. I can't mm-hmm. imagine anybody else as these roles. So when I read, you know, when I'll now move to this, the fourth book, I'm going to see those two people because they have embodied this character. Uh, and it's just, I, it's, it's great stuff. It's, it's really great stuff. And the reunion uh, I've seen as far as the reunion, it's, Oh, it's beyond expectations. <laughs> it's such a payoff for fans. Um, it's worth the wait. Uh, Matt Roberts wrote it. He did such a phenomenal job. Uh, I, I just, I was giddy. I was really giddy, you know, watching, you know, you, you're rooting for the show to succeed. You want it to succeed. There were p- parts of season two that got a little like, okay, we're getting a little too Frenchy here. I'm a little done <laughs> with this. I, I, I don't feel any of that. I cannot wait to see where they go. I obviously cannot wait till they get on the ships and start that other adventure. Um, I'm, I'm very excited about this season. My my last question is: Do, do you know of any um, surprises that we should be looking out for, or anything specific that fans should uh, keep an eye out for in the, in the upcoming season? Well, there's definitely the Easter eggs that are uh, little little ones left for us. There's one in the print shop during the reunion. You may not catch it because it's so small. Uh, there's an Easter egg on the Artemis that. Um, the uh, production designer put that's actually from the French brothel from season two. Look out for those. I think some more are coming along too. Um, I, the, I, there's a really fun story uh, behind Claire's costume that she wears the, to go uh, back to the, the past and uh, it's layered and it goes through several iterations as she, you know, gets more comfortable being back in the past that in itself is such a great story. And the way that she, she creates it is a super fun uh, scene that uses some superhero, superhero music. I'll just say that. Uh, <laughs> uh, and it's been very well done. There's some good little pop culture shout outs too. And um, I think it's episode five. It's episode, I think it's five when she, when she's creating that costume. Um, and uh, that's a, that's a super fun episode. I, uh, and I love the way that they handle music this season. They said that they try to remain authentic with the tunes, but sometimes nothing beats a great contemporary song to really set the tone. And they do that this year uh, beautifully. Uh, so I haven't, I, I, I don't know. I haven't seen, I, I didn't see any, um, I only saw a few scenes in South Africa. I didn't see at the very, very end. Um, there is like a, a, a water stunt that, um, Claire does, uh, she, I mean, uh, uh, Katrina, she has to jump over the ship. For those who know the, the books, they know that she's going to end up in the water at one point. Uh, I missed that, but she, she was going to happen to do it that night. 
So um, uh, there's that to look forward to as well. And as you know, with the books, it's still kind of ends cliffhangery as well. Uh, the, they're already starting on season four. They're already, as you know, they're already, you know, they're already breaking stories. The, the good news is, is not only will they be in Scotland, but they're going to be in the state somewhere because they have to set up the American colonies for season four. So they will be somewhere in America. So, you know, keep your eyes out and talk to your travel agent and figure out how to get to the <laughs> set there. <laughs> You know, I, I do want to clarify one thing. You said that they are you are you saying that Bear McCreary adapted a contemporary song of today for the show? He did. Uh, he did. Oh. He, it, uh, it was a, it's a Bob Dylan song. Uh, it's not done by Bob Dylan, but it's it's somebody else does it. And it's gorgeous. It's just gorgeous. I didn't recognize it because I'm a music um, idiot. I didn't recognize the title, but I specifically asked him about it because it was it was so well done. And he said that and he said that's it's a rare thing. Um, but it, it works well here, and you'll see it. It, it they use it uh, at a moment where they're juxtaposing them in two different centuries, and it just oh man, it works. It works great. <laughs> well, he has that great experience of adapting all along the Watchtower for BSG, so I I, I trust in him to do the exact right thing with any <laughs> Bobby D songs. Yeah, it's super neat. Super neat. All right. Well, thank you, Lynette, for joining us today. I really, really appreciate it. I speak for my, my wife and all yes. of our fans. We are so indebted to you for joining us. And this has been a great conversation. Yes. My pleasure. Call me, call me at the end of the season if you want. We can do it again. What did I tell you guys? Like, oh Le- my goodness, goodies, right? Lynette Rice, everybody. Wow. You want to you wanna do her job too, right? Uh, I, I mean, I, I don't, <laughs> I will say this. I don't uh, envy her position in New York. Uh, for for having to deal with all the stars and all the questions and being rushed by stars and you know like that that must have been very tough and for her to pull it off the way that she did I mean it was almost I mean from what the coverage that I've seen and having Ashley and Janet our editors go down there and and cover this event for us uh, by the way if you get a chance to go and check out um, all videos, of our social media yes. all social media videos and everything it's all there on Facebook and Twitter uh, <laughs> selfless plug uh, a shameless plug rather. Um, she she handled it perfectly. I mean, you wouldn't know any difference. And I, I, I don't envy her for that. However, being able to go to the set and see all these things and, and, and learning about Bear McCreary's adaptation of a Bobby Dylan song, how freaking cool is that, right? Love. Oh, my Love. goodness. Uh, this is... Uh, more than uh, what uh, more more than anything I ever expected to talk to Lynette. I mean, it, it was just great to talk to another uh, another Outlander fan. I mean, to begin with, and I, she's just so real and funny and personable. So if you don't already follow Lynette on social media on Twitter, uh, if you haven't really been able to see the coverage that she's been able to do, dive in, guys, dive in. Please do so because it, it is well worth the read. And you know what? And, and to boot too. I mean, I, I'm not. You know, just saying it, just to say it. She she's a very good writer too. She writes very well. She gets to the point. Clearly, you heard her. You heard her just speak for about a half hour, and she was just right on it constantly. And that's how she writes. And she writes to the point. Uh, and just I I, I love reading her articles. Um, on EW about Outlander. It's phenomenal. So it, it's always a must read. Uh, after, for any Outlander project that she has going on. I agree. My love, are you ready to close out our last show before the premiere? Of season three. Are you ready for the premiere? Let's get into this real quick. Yeah. Let's just do this. Yes. Are you ready for the premiere of season three? What am I doing right now? You're bouncing on your yoga ball, waving your hands up in the air like you just don't care. I'm so excited. <laughs> I am so excited. And I just can't contain it. Just talking about season three and getting all these goosies, listening to Lynette talk about Outlander and yep. all these goose, bo- uh, not goosebumps, Easter eggs <laughs> that we get to have. I'm just, uh, yes, bring it. Bring it on. I, I, you know, I've been excited for season three. I, I've been looking forward to it, but I, I'm now pumped and jacked. I'm ready to go. After talking to Lynette and after listening to her and, and going back and forth, I'm stoked. I, it, it is what today is what thir- uh, Friday as yes. we're recording this. Like I, Sunday cannot come fast enough. Well, lucky for you, maybe you can see it Saturday night at midnight. Oh, you, you, you never know. <laughs> you never know. We'll never see. Know. Only time will tell. Everyone go out and get yourself some whiskey. Mm-hmm. Uh, make sure that you are, you know, letting us know where you're watching the show because we want to know that as well. We're yeah, just we want to interact so excited. with you. Exactly. Exactly. So this is a, a final call to you before season three. 
You are going to want to join the Outlander Cast clan gathering on Facebook. Mm-hmm. This is our exclusive fan community. It is full of Outlander fans from around the world, book readers, show watchers, anybody. You can go for just kind, amazing, thoughtful, fun interaction with not only us, but the Outlander cast staff. And this is where we are going to be getting a lot of interaction when we do Facebook Lives, when we pull responses. Because if you're new to Outlander cast, we get a lot of listener feedback. You know, you can hear your question, your input put onto this show, whether it's through voicemail, whether it's through Twitter, whether it's through Facebook. But the clan mm-hmm. gets a lot of extra special attention. And it's, you know, I'm a little biased because, you know, I am, along with my wife, the creator of the clan. I'm not going to lie. But I've been told, and I do think, that this is the best Outlander Facebook group that the the, the, the interwebs has to offer. I might concur. I, I, and again, a little biased. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Yeah. But uh, everybody is, it really is genuinely nice. There, There's there's no conflict. There's Correct. no like, oh, book readers suck or show what, like none of that none exists. Of that. It, we're everyone, all fans. It's, it's harmonious. We're all there. We're all having a good time. So please do join the Outlander Cast Clan gathering on Facebook. Another thing that I want you to do too. Do tell. You know, if you've been following Outlander Cast for some time, you know that we have the podcast to which you are listening right now. And thank you for doing so. Thank you. We also have the Outlander Cast blog. And be- for a long time, they were two separate sites. Yes. But guess what? What? No longer are they two separate sites. We have now funneled everything into one brand new, stunningly, again, biased a little bit, but stunningly gorgeous yeah. website. I mean, you could see it on your mobile. But yes, I would suggest the first time you see it, go see it on the desktop. Yeah, because there's something special there yeah. waiting for you on the desktop. <laughs> you know what it's kind of like? What's that? It's kind of like when Jamie and Claire got together mm-hmm. and it was fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> when you saw the website, you had fireworks? No, I'm just saying having you got the, the butterflies and the blog together. Did my, did my website give you butterflies? Yes, it did. Yes, it did. <laughs> yes, it did. So guys, listen, this is your one-stop shop. This is everything as an Outlander fan that you need. You get to listen. You get to read. You get to support and engage and shop. You know, there's places to shop on there. So head on over and check it out. We're going to be doing some really fun things right. coming up with the grand reopening and the relaunch of OutlanderCast.com. Some giveaways, com. some giveaways, some more articles, podcasts. All of it is going to be there. You can get all your social media needs out of it. It's just, a really, I, I have to pat myself on the back here a little bit. And you too, my darling. And also the editors of the blog, Janet and Ashley. We all work together very hard. And But, you know, I'm going to give myself a little extra pat on the back because the website is fracking phenomenal. <laughs> it's, an, it's an amazing experience. If you want to read, you can read the blogs. If you want to listen to the podcast, you can do it all in one place. And you can do that all at www.outlandercast.com. Dot com. Check that is it. it. Outlandercast.com. My darling, are you ready to finally close out this show? Bring it or do on. you want to just keep going until the premiere? But no, I need to like do some work. And do you pick, need to eat? And yes. Go to the bathroom, perhaps? Probably. I doubt it. Okay. <laughs> right, let's close it out. You know, as always, we want to connect with you, but it is very important that you connect with us in season if you want your feedback possibly read on the phone, on the podcast. So here's a couple of ways you could do it. You could follow us on Instagram. It is at OutlanderCast. To be honest, all of our social media is at OutlanderCast. So Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. But after each episode airs, we're going to put out a post that says, we're asking for your GBG, your good, bad, great, your kilt rating, one out of five kilts, your thoughts on the episode. Mm -hmm. And that is where we want you to respond, whether it's that post on Instagram, Facebook, in the Outlander Cast Clan Gathering, or on Twitter. If you cannot fit all of your thoughts, you can also email us. We can go right onto the website and just go where it says email us, and you can write a little message right onto the website. It will come to us. And also, if you're feeling really feisty, really feisty, and you need to get your voice out, call the hotline. Call the hotline, 503-454-6730, and we will play your voicemail, your voice message, 
right on the podcast right then and there. The Call Us is also available on the website. So you can see that all there. So thank you guys so much for listening to this episode of Outlander Cast. Here's to season three. Lynette Rice. Lynette Rice. Thank for you for joining us again. Park. Oh my God. And Stunning. Um, join the clan. Now's the time, guys. <laughs> all right. That's it for now, everybody. My name is Mary Larson. And I'm Blake. And you've been listening to Outlander Cast.